Worsley, I'm DSI's coding sales manager, and today we're going to talk a little bit about ML Campbell's glazes. Um, they have two different types of glazes, what we term as wet glazes and dry glazes. So we're going to go over both of those types of glazes, how they're used, and the end result that you're going to get. So the first glaze we're going to talk about is the the wet glaze and ML Campbell has two different wet glazes they have a product called vintage alka glaze and they also have a newer product out called furniture glaze the difference being the newer furniture glaze has better wipeability uh, so you have a little more open, to open time to work on larger pieces without it drying so I have a few samples here of some different uh, glaze techniques and the different glazes on some sample boards. So I just wanted to show, show you a few of those before we get started. Uh, this first one is a nice piece that we did half with glaze and we left half painted so you can see the difference that you get once you glaze a paint system. This is just the furniture glaze uh, wiped over our stealth pigmented conversion varnish tinted to a gray. Uh, the stealth is on there once it's dry we go ahead and we wipe our uh, furniture glaze on, wipe it off. You can leave as much or as little as you want in your profiles, and then that's, that's the change you're gonna get when you do a paint and glaze system. So now we're gonna do a full, full door with the wet glaze. We're gonna use ML Campbell's furniture glaze on this white door that's painted with uh, just plain white stealth conversion varnish. Uh, when you're doing a glaze, you do want to lightly scuff that paint before you glaze so you can get the best adhesion. I, I like to use one of the Merca's Merlon Total Pads. Uh, the gray one is a little bit better because it's finer. So when we, when we do a light scuff on here, the glaze isn't going to highlight our scuff marks. And when we're doing that, we want to want to go with the grain of the wood or of the door because uh, they will leave fine scratches in there. So if you go randomly or across the grain and then you glaze it, you're going to see that in your glaze. So we'll go ahead and we're going to lightly scuff this door, blow it off, and then we'll come back and wipe some glaze on and off of it. So now that we have our door lightly scuffed, blown off, we're going to go ahead and apply the glaze. Uh, a couple different ways you can put the glaze on. Today we're just going to wipe it on with a rag. You can also brush it on or spray it on. Uh, it's just all preference. So we're going to go ahead. I just have ML Campbell's furniture glaze. We just have this tinted to Van Dyke brown and just putting it over this straight white paint. So you're going to want to get it, get it nice and wet. Make sure we get it down in all of our profiles. And if you're using the wet glaze, either the wet glaze, the vintage glaze, or the furniture glaze, they do go a long way. So a quart of glaze will probably do a whole kitchen for you, unless it's a really big kitchen. But uh, it, do, it, does, it does go very far. Now the, the spray glaze goes less because we're spraying it so we have some overspray. Um, same thing with this, if we were to spray this glaze on instead of wiping it, we're going to go through a little bit more glaze go ahead and we'll just coat the whole door. Grab. I always like to use kind of two rags in each hand to hold the door with. That way we're not leaving fingerprints on it. And I'll just come through and give a quick wipe, get all the heavy glaze off of there. You are going to go through a lot of rags with glazing. So we'll go ahead and we'll get it cleaned up pretty good and then I'm going to switch to a, a cleaner rag to go ahead and finish this off. I do all my flats first. Now when I get down into the re reveal, I like to just take this rag, wrap it around my finger. then just follow the follow the profile there so it'll give you a nice a nice line in there. And 
glazing is an art form. So if you have two different people glazing, you're probably going to get two different looks. So it's always good to have one person at least doing your final, final wipe on a glaze. That way everything stays somewhat consistent. You don't want it consistent that it looks like it's man-made, but you don't want two different colors either. So this one I'm going to wipe off fairly clean, not leave a lot of hang up in there. And then once we get it to where we want, we'll go ahead and we'll let this dry probably at least an hour until it dulls down and then we'll top coat it. And the one thing you definitely want to do is you want to top coat the same day you glaze. We don't want to let this glaze sit overnight and then try to top coat it. We're, we're going to lose adhesion, probably have a finish failure. So for more information on any of these glazing products or techniques, please contact your local DSI finish specialist and they'd be happy to come out to your shop and do an in-shop demo. With ML Campbell and DSI, there's nothing we can't finish. Yeah.